Remember what I said about getting a lot of black cat gifts. The only vodka that matters. Who needs a shot glass? So Patrick and I accidentally totally gifted the Magi to each other earlier and bought each other the same bottle of vodka for when you're feeling extra lazy. Perfect. Hair continuity issues. Hi, and welcome to episode four of Get Lit and Knit. I'm Allie. I'm one half of Get Lit and Knit on Instagram and Get Lit and Knit podcast on Ravelry. So today we're back with our regularly scheduled thing. We're going to do a little bit of a lightning round today, hopefully without it feeling too rushed. I'm going to talk about whips. I have none the FOs because these past few weeks have been nuts and I'm working on bigger projects. I have one project fail and more acquisitions than I bargained for. So let's get started. Also, totally forgot to ask, I got some feedback that people would like to see a tighter shot just to be able to see stuff better, and I agree, so we're trying out something new. So let me know what you think, and uh, also forgot to mention we have a, a substitute co-host today, because I have zero self-control and these were on sale because the comic book store by me is moving, so, so Tina is here. I have a fair amount of whining to do today, so I kind of wish I could do the Tina groan. Haven't really gotten it down. All right, since I have none the FOs, let's start with whips. This is, I think, everybody's favorite whip. The Kanye West PDF pattern by Pen and String on Etsy. We're making some progress here, but I don't know, I started working on it in a way where like I wanted to start giving him facial features. So like, you know, we've got his nose and starting to fill in the sunglasses. But every time I add something to it, like it seems like it's gonna get worse before it gets better because I, um, I haven't filled in his hairline here or here. I'm outlining the sunglasses. I still haven't touched the beard line. So it just looks like some weird cubism crap right now. Um, this has been my still my hashtag craft for 20 project and will continue to be because I haven't been able to put much more time in than that. I'm mostly, the reason this is going a little slower than most projects is because I don't want to take this one on the CTA. I don't want it to get dirty and that's where most of my crafting happens. So I've only been working on this at home and this is the same problem that I'm running into with my other projects. They're just so cumbersome that I don't I don't want to take them on the go. Work in progress number two is there are no new works in progress here just because I think I unintentionally took on a lot of bigger time intensive projects and tried to take on something smaller and it was an utter failure which we will get to later. Okay. Whip number two is the Beekeeper's Quilt by Tiny Owl Knits. I've been working on this one for a while. I put a post on Instagram recently when I hit 70 puffs because I couldn't wait for 100 and have knit three more since then. I finally started breaking into gifted skeins, like skeins from swaps, because I really wanted to knit through all my stuff first, but I was getting really bored with my own stash, which is the fun of this. Like, I think... Uh, uh, Jill from the Knitting Broomstick podcast was talking about this. Hi, Jill. I love you. Um, was talking about how it's kind of, I think it was Molly who mentioned it first, this is kind of a remedy for cast on itis where if you get to try a little bit of the yarn, you get to play with it first and, and see what it's like. So this is um, Aragonia in Bubblegum. And I believe this is Malabrigo Sock, Malbrigo Sock, um, from Melissa of Spicy Homemaker. And this is Koigu, and I don't think they name their colorways. The Malbrigo Sock one is uh, Violetta Africana, I think. So these guys added, plus a few more that I've already put in the jar, that's... Uh, think 78 done and I am now working on I also busted into the mini skeins that Robin from Stitching Between Pages gave me I don't remember the story with this one but I really like this red and it's super soft I'll probably have to ask her next time I see her but the only way I have found because 
I have heard a lot of stories from people who have started this and just never finished because you're knitting the same thing so many times. The way I've found to make that fun is I try to keep a whole bunch of minis on me all the time. Like this is a really great little bag from Seltzer Goods. It's not strictly a knitting project bag, but it's the perfect size for this. Um, I've been trying to keep a small rainbow with me. You know, knit the rainbow, taste the rainbow. And I switch colors on every puff until that yarn is gone. So still enjoying it. It's still a really great CTA knit for me, a good commuter knit. And um, I think it'll be good as it's, it's started to warm up here. I don't want bigger projects that are going to lay on me. And uh, this one, this one should fit the bill. So I'll keep working on it and keep you posted. The next whip is a big one. This has been a long time coming, still working on it. Desperately trying to finish this before the uh, quince along from Laura, the Fawn Knit podcast is over. This is my Georgetown cardigan. It's by Hannah Fettig from Home and Away. You can't see my face, that's okay. You know what it looks like. Um, now, I since I updated you guys a couple weeks ago, the other sleeve is done, so those are both done. And I've started the ribbing. I think I picked up the stitches correctly and I think this is just a thing I'm gonna have to block out but I'm a little concerned about like the puckering and the kind of the curling it's doing but without giving too much away you knit a certain amount in your smaller needle size just a one by one rib and then another equal portion in your larger needle size so I'm hoping that by the time I switch to the bigger needles it goes away my dilemma however is that I have a test knit I want to do that requires the exact same needles and I really don't if I can help it want to um, buy another pair because God knows I buy enough of this stuff so it may be the extra push I need to just finish this thing and I pointed this out before talked about it before but maybe you'll be able to see it a little better today my sister made me a little wine glass progress keeper just with a little charm from Michael's Total impulse buy, and I love it. It's super cute. Okay, I have one more whip. Let's talk about the really exciting one. This is completed clue one and two of the Doodler by Stephen West. It's so huge, and it's not even blocked. I am really excited about this one, even though it's a little bit of a tale of woe because I lost Yarn Chicken now three times because originally I was having this problem where I ran out of this color and had to improvise with some striping on the end. Thinking I had learned my lesson, I figured, okay, I had a little bit of the stripe color left over, so I would start clue number two starts here in that color since this was already striped like that. All of the stripe colors are Sweet Georgia, Party of Five, Tough Love Sock in Sea to Sky. And then the body color is Araucania, number 34, Clouds Above. It's Araucania Huasco, actually. Ran out of the contrast colors. Ran out of sapphire. Went back to the contrast colors for a while. And then right around here panicked and started using the color that I plan on using for clue number three. This is super deep stash. I have no idea what this is. But my hope, and I haven't had time to do this yet, my hope is when I cast on wedge number one that it'll it'll look a little less weird because it'll it'll be touching. But I don't know. So my game plan as far as color organization is I think, think being the operative term here, I have enough yarn for three wedges. So I will probably do it like this. Like, I like this and I got Abby's vote on it and I don't know, it made the most sense to both of us. So that is the game plan. My only complaint about the Deep Stash yarn is that it doesn't have the same, it doesn't have nylon in it, so it doesn't have the same, um, it doesn't have the same sheen that all of these do, but 
neither does the main color for clue number one, so I figure it'll be fine. I mostly just can't wait to see how big this blocks out because I do want to maintain some of the, the garter stitch squish, but I really want to keep the, I really want to be able to see the eyelets too. So that's where that's at. Well, when I get time to pick it back up, we'll see how it goes. Before we get into acquisitions and the fun stuff, let's talk about the depressing stuff. So I was gonna cast on a pair of socks because I was getting bored with my own projects and I was worried that the, the content would get redundant for you guys. And so I cast on a pair of sport weight socks in Petty Boo Tonal Sock in a brown and a bright blue. They're not even gonna make it to camera because I already frogged them. It was the first time I had made a pair of socks on DPNs again in forever. And the gauge was very weird. And I was following a pattern that I, uh, I loved it and would want to knit it again. But I think I may just have to go with the recommended needle size and trust that it's going to come out right. Because I got through the cuff and the body of the sock did the heel flap. I went to pick up stitches for the gusset and the heel was baggy. Here's here's the reality of what happened. I, I haven't replaced a lot of my DPNs just because I don't use them. I have all but converted to Magic Loop and it called for, the gauge I was getting it was like 3.5 or 3.75 millimeter needles and I only had three in that size. And I know that if you're knitting in the round you can kind of get away with having a different fourth size needle. I couldn't get away with it. And so they're sport weight socks and they looked kind of big and I was just knitting along thinking like, all right, whatever. Like, it, and it goes so fast, I didn't want to stop. I just wanted to see how it would turn out. Then I got to the heel and what I didn't realize was that I was alternating between the main size needle and the bigger size needle back and forth. And so it totally screwed up the gauge. And then when I tried to pick up the stitches, like I knew it wasn't gonna work. I have tried to have more precision in my knitting cause just, I don't have a ton of time and I wanna make stuff that I will wear and use for a long time. And, but between that sock that I frogged in just a moment of frustration and anger and my my extended game of yarn chicken with the doodler, I need to stop with the like, oh, it's fine attitude. If you've seen the picture of that, it's a cartoon with a dog sitting in like, he's at a table with a cup of coffee and like the room is in flames and he's just like, this is fine. I'll throw it up with the, the image credit if I can find it. <laughs> That's what this was like. So in my, fit of rage, I ripped it apart and I cast on what I know and do best and have not done since January Sockathon. I'm just gonna do two at a time toe up vanilla socks because it fits and it's patent croy so I know what kind of gauge I'm gonna get. These are the, the cubics, I, I know what I'm getting. I kind of hate the cable on this because it's really springy and it's not as long as I'd want to but so I won't be putting a ton of work into these super fast. I kind of wanted something that could just be on the go and if it languishes for and if it languishes for a little bit, I won't feel bad because this patent's croy is years old and just trying to de-stash and try to outpace my spending, which for the most part I've been able to do. But once you get a look at my acquisitions, you may not believe me. Forgive me, KT, for I have sinned. I have totally fallen off the 50 points for Gryffindor bandwagon. <laughs> That's the worst part, too. I've been tracking it. I have been really trying to stash down. I think you'd be really surprised at how small my stash is because I really try to be very conscious of it. And because I know that for a lot of people, that stash and having just that creative material ready to go is really enjoyable. It stresses me out. I have, I am one of those people who is a total believer in the KonMari method, the life-changing magic of tidying up kind of thing, where before I moved, the last time I moved to, um, back to Chicago in July, 
I got rid of probably 60% of my stuff and donated a ton of yarn um, and just like disposed of and donated the majority of what I owned. And I feel better with less stuff to keep track of, less to maintain and just feeling less weighed down. Cause I know that for school, I'm going to have to move closer to the loop. And so I'm always thinking about the next move. I even like anytime I get an online order, you know, I'm saving that box because I'm, I, some people hoard old newspapers. I hoard boxes because I don't want to buy them every time I move. This is all to say that the yarn I'm going to show you all has a designated purpose, like right now. And both of those purposes are Devin's fault. <laughs> and she knows. So after I finished those test knit socks for the Hugh Loco trunk show, out of Coltrane and Rowdy Mermaid, I made Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erica Luter. I had to get more of that gray. Nicole was an angel and like listed the only skein of this that she had. So I got Coltrane on her Phyllis sock base. So that's 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. Also, let me know how holding stuff up is working. I don't know if it's better to hold it here or if that works or if it focuses. I have no idea. So as I was, I was talking to her on Instagram because I she put it up and I snapped it up immediately for fear that somebody else would get it. I asked her what would pair well with it. And there was one I had been eyeing. I wanted Stardust real bad. And she said it would go well with it. And I totally agree. So this is in her Glitz sock base. It's uh, Superwash Merino Nylon Stellina. And it is just like... I would normally never go for glitter. It is the finest, prettiest Stellina. And not only is this too pretty for socks, this yarn combination, and this is ridiculous, this is just arbitrary meaning that I'm giving this yarn, it feels sacred. It feels too nice to make just anything with it. So actually, if you go on my Ravelry favorites, I have a bundle called the Hugh Loco Dilemma because Devin and I were talking about this and trying to figure out what to make with it. And so I have a few ideas, but I think more than likely this will become the cameo shawl. And let me know what you think about this, but I think Devin and I were toying with the idea of doing a knit along specifically for that shawl. And bonus points if you make it with Stardust, because I think she's got a couple grays that would work just as well with this, and it's just beautiful. And there's purple and brown and gray. It's just, it is so multi-dimensional, and I can't wait to get into this. But as you have seen, I got to get some stuff off the needles first. My last round of acquisitions involved a little pilgrimage to Windy Nitty. This is on the north side. This is, uh, I think, the, lo the closest local yarn store to me now because my local yarn store closed and I was in like an actual period of mourning with it. <laughs> I really didn't want to go anywhere else. Didn't, I don't know, it had like become a little piece of home for me and it re really sucked to watch it go. And... But I'd heard awesome things about Windy Nitty, and so I went in, and it was awesome. Like, super clean, super organized. The um, the yarn selection was great. They carry Brooklyn Tweed, which I'm super excited to try. And I regret not getting the owner's name. I'm a jerk, and I didn't even ask. But, like, she dropped everything she was doing. I told her what I needed and she helped me totally figure it out. So Devin put out a call for test knitters for her I'm an uncultured swine and I'm going to miss, I'm gonna to totally butcher this, but uh, I am test knitting her Amboise shawl, Chateau d'Amboise, I don't know. Feel free to correct me in French speaking, viewers can make fun of me, I can take it. But it's a, it's a lace shawl based on the architecture of that castle. It's a fingering weight shawl that calls for a main color and a contrasting color for what looks like an applied border. I haven't started it yet, obviously. So this is Neighborhood Fiber Company. 
This is their Studio Sock 100% Superwash Merino in Thomas Circle. And then for the contrast color, I've got, what are you called? Uh, Canton. So I was a little worried about how it would block out, but I saw a sample of this and it blocked beautifully. I wanted to be sure it was something that wouldn't hide the lace. So these are both semi-solid tonal, I'd say. Like this one, I think you can tell, has got some lighter bits and some darker bits, but like they're big sections. I had to get two skeins of this because I was really worried about running out, which is totally fine because I will definitely get minis and a pair of socks out of this, I think. And I would love to use what's left of this and this together to make a pair of socks. So I am casting this guy on ASAP. So Devin is going to be in Chicago on the 14th. And I'm hoping, you know, while we're hanging out and knitting, I can knit while she's there and maybe pick her brain a little bit and make sure she's liking what's happening. Originally, we had talked about going for something that had some silk content in it, but this, I think, is going to drape really nicely, and it has a sheen to it, so, and it feels really nice. Like, I think it's just a two-ply, and it, I think it's just going to have all the same stuff you would want to get out of silk anyway, so, so that's that. So we'll wrap up with some thank yous and blather, starting with the thank yous. All of you guys, this is just nuts. Like, it seems like over the last week, we've kind of blown up. There are a lot of people who've given us a lot of shout outs, specifically want to thank Mina and Jilly. And I don't even need to tell you which podcasts because you know who they are. And I have not stopped fangirling and I don't take any of this for granted. Like there are a million podcasts you can be watching. This is part of the reason I try to keep them pretty short. So you have a choice and you know, can have the time to invest in longer episodes if you want. But we are about to hit 300 subscribers. So be sure to hit subscribe if you're not already, because once we hit 300, we are doing a stitch marker giveaway. Uh, Tanya, one of our viewers, made them and graciously donated them. She doesn't have an Etsy shop or anything, but they are just the cutest. And we will do an, a giveaway on Ravelry and Instagram for that. So speaking of Ravelry, we are wrapping up putting our swants together for the podcaster challenge for the knitting games. So this is hosted by Melissa of the Spicy Homemaker podcast, Brittany of the Sip and Stitch podcast. So... Brittany, Melissa, Gabby from Once Upon a Corgi, Abby and I are all making swants. We are going to take pictures that are unidentifying. So we want this to be a super, as blind a vote as possible. We're going to post those pictures on March 11th on my Ravelry group and Gabby's Ravelry group. So once those go up, hit love on your favorite and the winner We'll get a bunch of prizes. Each podcast has donated a prize to give to our viewers. So go ahead and when that comes up, because I won't podcast again before that goes live, be sure to get in and vote for your favorite. After we filmed the bonus episode, Abby and I sat down and put a test pair together and just failed miserably. Like we literally sewed the crotch backwards. It was it was ridiculous. And so now I am finishing up my real pair and those will be ready to go and they are hideous. I am very excited. Let's wrap it up with what's going on with me if anybody cares. No, yes, maybe, I don't know. You don't have to care. This week is super busy because I've got extra work stuff going on. I've had extra networking events and stuff and it is my stepsister's bridal shower this weekend and I'm a bridesmaid. So I'm going to central slash Southern Illinois to help set that up. And I, you know, I'm finishing up the swants and just trying to like keep my apartment in decent shape and finishing up. I finished writing my responses to those interview questions for law school. I just need to sit and record it. And the recordings are a max of like a few minutes each, but it's a question of how many takes I'm going to have to go through to get it right. So, and then I have one more law school application I have to fill out. So, 
We'll see where that goes. It's gotten to a point where filling out applications for things is no harder than filling out a job application. It's very much a, it's a cut and paste job at this point, but it's just sitting down and concentrating and doing it. So one last thank you to uh, Eric from Sticks Plus Twine and Adrian of the Freakish Lemon podcast because I finally started listening to the Star Wars Force Awakens audiobook and you guys were not exaggerating. The audio production quality on that is amazing. I didn't I don't know why I didn't think that they would have the rights to like the John Williams score or the BB-8 sounds or just it's perfect. Like I was on the bus and started the audiobook and the like Star Wars theme, the Star Wars theme starts. And I was just like, no way. It's so good. So I've been alternating. I've been alternating between that and the these surprise new Kendrick Lamar EP album drop I just died I was up late the night before and saw a little teaser that something might go live and that the listing was on Spotify and Apple Music but it was grayed out so you couldn't click it and then the next morning lo and behold and it was a really early morning for me for work there it was this is all the stuff that didn't make the cut on his last album and I grew up watching a ton of VH1 behind the music. I love hearing all of that behind the scenes stuff. And it's also um, kind of reworks of live performances he's done on the last episode of the Colbert Report and on Stephen Colbert's new show. And I think on Jimmy Kimmel and his live performances are just my absolute favorite. It's the same intensity and like quality of performance as like, I watched one of them and immediately thought of the footage of Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock. Like, it's just, it's on that level. And whether you enjoy hip-hop or not, I would say give those performances a shot. Just watch them on YouTube. I may go as far as to link them below. So, between between The Force Awakens audiobook, Kendrick Lamar's new album, and Rihanna's sort of new album, I have to really force myself to listen to and read other things because I just keep going back. I'm obsessed. I know you're here for the yarn and it's, you know, music is very personal. I think, I was thinking about, when I was trying to think of Q&A questions for our last bonus video. I wish I had thought of this one. So feel free to respond to this one in the thread when I put the show notes up. But I was thinking about, you know, parallel reality or universe. If I had picked a totally different career path, what would it have been? And I totally would have been a music journalist because I love rock docs and hearing about what goes into making an album to bring it back around to the yarn stuff. My ideas for all of my designs that I have kind of tucked away in notebooks and not drawn, but kind of like I gave like the best written description I could to kind of jog my memory on what I was thinking. All of them are inspired by music and that's not a unique thing, but I've seen a lot of indie dyed yarn that's inspired by music. Like Lolo Did It does a lot of that, and I love them. Um, but there aren't, at least that I've seen, a huge body of patterns that are inspired by music. So I think that may be the direction I'm going. This is also to say, because I know uh, Kay and Dan Jones do this too, where they talk about, you know, what you're listening to, what you're reading, and just like what what you're into that's making your life a little better, because I feel like that's kind of what this YouTube subgenre is about. It's a little bit of a scaled down, like, like podcasters' favorite things. And so if you are interested in you know, hearing about some of that stuff and getting, you know, getting into that conversation, letting me give you recommendations and explaining why I really love presenting people with music that I know they'll love, but I'm not sure they would have picked up on their own. So that may be a fun thing to bring here. I think that's everything. So thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting us. Hit subscribe. Find us and follow us on all the things. If you're here, you've probably already done that. 
once we hit 300, we'll do that giveaway. And that's just your, your best shot at knowing when it goes up. As always, we're open to feedback. Let us know what you think of the new setup. Thanks again. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. There is a cat. Did you see that? Aw, Ellie claimed me. She's rubbing my feet. Hi! Maybe you're not plotting my death. Maybe she's buttering me up. What are you knitting? What are you working on? Aw! I got nuzzled. Okay, that's enough. You're free to go.